Okay, and now we should be live. Hello everybody. Sorry for the little delay. We had some tiny minor technical problems. <laughs> wouldn't be <Yeah>. us. <laughs> there wouldn't be us if uh, everything would have went smooth. But now I think everything is right. So I see many people already on YouTube. Yeah, we went incorrectly to a different event. But now I think we are right. And we are going to see some games of Shirov today. Yes, I'm very excited for that. Yes, and he is known as a very aggressive player, um, a great attacking player. He, he's got something of Tal's style, uh, because some of his sacrifices are not always entirely correct. And for today I chose some games that, just to, to show how he tries to uh, make the position complicated and um, play for the initiative. No, it's. I think that yeah. uh, uh, that will be a lot of fun. And by the way, he's also giving um, a master class on coaches this week. Yeah. And you I should... saw that uh, two days ago, and uh -huh. I was like, I'm gonna <laughs> go sign up for that. Because... That was a nice coincidence, actually. <laughs> yeah, I think his master class is about uh, calculation versus intuition. Um, yeah, I haven't checked out his particular masterclass, but I know there is a, the whole uh, masterclass series is about attacking chess and how to attack. So he's definitely one, uh, one player to learn no. from. <laughs> about that. He, he does know a thing or two about how to attack. Yes, very much. <laughs> oh, and I can see we're live. Are we live on Twitch as well? Hopefully oh, everything is YouTube. fine. Yes, we are. Great, so problems fixed. Let's go before uh, our time runs out. So let's start with this position, which is yes. a game of Shirov versus Mamediarov. Uh, Shirov is playing with the white pieces here. And in this position, he plays the move knight to d3, uh, which I think makes a lot of sense now because here he wants to trade queens uh, since these pawns will be very weak. And after queen e3, for example, rook e3, um, white should be much better. We should have a big, a big attack against these two pawns. Um, but of course, in the game, black went queen c7, and that's why we are looking at this game because the queens were not <laughs> tried off. <laughs> King hunt with the queens. Of the yes, we still have the possibility of an attack here. So he he goes rook to f1. And here, Mamediarov goes rook d4. And this is the moment where we are going to stop for a moment. And let's try to find a continuation for white. Hi, Anna. Good to see you again. Oh, yeah. Was, you had some very good suggestions last time, Anna. Um, okay. So, of course... I want to start by looking at what takes at six <laughs> um, for two reasons, or maybe more. But I mean, right now, black is maybe threatening to take an e4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's um, so either we should protect that or we should just, you know, take the knight. Taking the knight would solve the problem. But of course, it's losing some material. But let's look at it so if we take black must take back and then we can maybe just recapture with the book but after that i'm not so sure how strong the attack is really going to be and maybe we have queen g5 in the air but would that lead to anything well here if you're looking at rook takes f6 we are not uh, probably not going to find mate, but here we are trying to play for the initiative. Yeah, um, yeah. find a way to um, unbalance the position. And c3 is a suggestion, but I think c3 just doesn't that just lose the pawn on e4? I think rook takes yeah, e4 can yeah. be can be annoying. Yeah. Yeah. We can probably yeah. defend the pawn, but of course rook takes. <laughs> Rook takes f6 looks um, really tempting here. Knight e5? Knight e5, because he has to take back with the queen to still protect the rook on d4, right? So knight e5, queen 
e5 and then rook f5 could be, but still, can he take on e4 then? He can, and I'm thinking that also after knight e5, there's an in-between move, rook takes e4, which... Yes, again, that's very... Yeah. Uh, it's very, very annoying nice also. ...e4 pawn being loose, because, I mean, it just seems like a little bit passive to go... Knight f2, yes. Yeah, I don't like that. I'm going to look for suggestions in the chat. <laughs> Sacrifice the rook is uh, a highly popular idea. Um, let me see. Sacrificing on f6. Then, and then queen h6. Yeah. So let's see how, how this plays out. Rook f6, pawn takes f6. And here we have a few options. We can take on f6. Queen h6 is, of course, an option. I'm just wondering if I can defend. So queen h6. Um, hmm? I don't know if... Oh, this was against uh, Mamadyarov? Yes, this was against Mamadyarov. Very nice. Two very uh, aggressive players then. Very strong also, yeah. Very aggressive and strong. So queen h6 in this position. It makes sense because uh, you want to combine it with rook g3, which is also being suggested, like rook f3 and rook g3. But are you going to make it there? Maybe. Rook takes e4, rook f3. And there are a few checks, but they don't seem to be very strong. There's also rook... Maybe rook d6, which seems to be on queen h6. Maybe just rook d6. Try to defend with rook g6. Um, yeah. Somehow. Maybe sacrifice that pawn. Going rook g3 first and then letting black take on e4 uh, and reply with queen h6. That's in the initial position okay. over here. Yeah, I think in the initial uh, position. Uh, I think we can we can also play for that. Rook g4, knight e4, rook g4 is the idea, no? Something like this. Um, uh, oh, can you? I have to refresh yeah. this for you. Yeah, yeah, something like yeah. Actually, oh yeah. I think this is the, the idea. We have to move the uh, rook, of course, and then if. Black would have taken with the rook on e4, then queen h6 was the idea, I think. Rook takes oh, e4, queen h6. Yeah. Yes, queen h6 looks very strong. But knight e4, rook g4, maybe this can be played. But I guess here, well, I have to go back to d6. Probably, and it is getting complicated. At least take on d4. This is a position where you can play many things. That's why I actually stopped in this position. Rook takes f6 is, of course, not the only option, but I, what I wanted to show here is how he's trying to complicate things. Pawn takes f6 and try for to create an attack out of this position. So let's take a look first at, at queen h6, because uh, it is one of the most natural ideas here. So I'm trying to defend e6. In the game, Mamedyarov actually defended with rook to e6, so let's... Let's try and defend this way. Rook f3, f5 is my idea. And I want to get my rook to g6 so I don't get mated. I think that's the only way to stop the mate. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm just going to get mated over there. Mm. There should be compensation here as well, but the idea that... Bless you, Sophie. Allergies, allergies, <laughs> spring <laughs> allergies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So here he actually uh, plays a very interesting move, which is knight to f2. Okay, so that's going to either f6, a8, 6. Yes, that is going to g4 and then we'll see yeah. where it goes from there. Knight f6, queen h6. But I think it's very important, the idea of bringing um, more and more pieces, no? knight f2 and knight g4, and then the rook and the queen, they will 
they will just join the attack. So here h5 is played. It's probably a natural reaction given that knight g4 is the threat, but it's also uh, a bit scary, I would say, you know, h5 yeah. and, and weaken a little the king. Queen h6. Yeah, exactly. Queen Two h6 in this position. Yes, of course. And in this position, it's actually very difficult to defend with black. There is only one move that kind of um, keeps the game complicated. That's queen d6. Giving up the pawn on h5, but planning to go king g7 and maybe... Mm, let's play this out. Queen h5, king g7, and maybe with the idea of rook h8 or rook g8 if if they can and, and run to f8. Yeah. And if there's a check on g4, then the king is going to f8. Very much complicated, but... In the game, this didn't happen. Um, Rook e6 was played, and after this move, black is lost. Queen h5. He runs to e7. Now c3. And the idea is to get the knight to g4. King e7, and black is simply tied up. And the problem of um, the 8th rank will become... Uh, visible in a moment and here he plays king h2 just we have some time to get the king out of that diagonal very, to stay patient. <laughs> very, stay patient. <laughs> very patient it's just saying like what are you going to do anyway no <laughs> what mm. are you going to play here with black there are so many weaknesses to be defended and i think a move like uh bringing like knight e3 and maybe bring the knight to f5 can be uh, an idea or knight h6 and knight f5 we have various ideas here no yeah. besides looking at f6 of course queen b6 and now queen h8 hitting on f6 there's no way to defend that if rook to d8 the queen is going to g7 much better placed and we are ready for knight h6 As yeah, well in case as... he goes uh, rook d to d6, then knight h6 is the yes. uh, reply. Yeah. yeah, I think knight h6 is over. And what else is there? Queen d8 maybe? Um, and here we could even go to h7. And the same threat of knight h6 and knight f5 is there. I mm. didn't go to g7 because uh, queen f8 might, be, might force me to go to h7 in, in, either way, no? So we can go to h7 directly and then bring the knight to f5. So here black is in, in big trouble. He took on b3, knight f6. Queen e8 is a big threat. And here queen g7. Knight g8 and game over. King d6 and black resigned. <laughs> That's... Uh, this is where the game ended. I think there's rook d1. It's pretty, it's pretty convincing. Yeah. Yeah. What if he had uh, given up the exchange in? I mean, it's probably not enough after uh, knight g8. Here, knight g8. Rook takes g8 uh, in this. Yeah, rook takes g8, but it's it doesn't even matter because white we can, can take. We can take f7 first. Yes, rook f7. Rook f7, king d6, right? <laughs> yeah. And then you can take on g8. And be up a pawn and have the king in the center. That looks very good. Yes, I would like to checkmate, but it's probably not, not possible yet. No, it's going to come. Rook f7, king d6. Yeah. I don't think we can checkmate right away, but take on g8. And here the threat is queen f8. And king c5. Oh, can you... Uh, yep. Sorry, board? I thought you were... <laughs> you were seeing it. King c5. And here we have a check on f8. Looks tempting. To which I think he has to play king c4. 
still I think this um, I don't know maybe there's more chances here for black right than in yeah. the game probably what it do, is we, have? <laughs> what do we have to play here uh, maybe rook, rook f3, f3? Pawn? just rook f3 yeah yeah I think so and I want to play queen f7 and win the rook Yeah. Just one of the threats, I guess. And the pawns are so weak. I think it should be, must be winning it correctly. Yes, but you still have to be careful here because <laughs> it's an end game and that pawn on a5 can be, can be dangerous. But yes, it should be, of course. The king should be too weak. And I just saw somebody asking on Twitch if this is a private uh, chess course. This is chess lessons that we do every week and uh, you're very welcome to write uh, suggestions in the chat uh, so that can help me out when uh, yes. Aluka has found a specifically uh, <laughs> difficult position <laughs> to challenge Sophie let's move on to the next one because I have so many nice ones to show you and this one against Lego I think is pretty impressive so it's Shiro with white pieces against Lego again a position where um I think you could go for many moves, but I, I'm going to give you some time to think about this position so you see what's going on and then we will discuss it. Yeah. So I just counted the material and that's completely equal. So we're not behind. We also don't have like a plus on that front. <laughs> um, what's going on? The queen seems a little offside. Our king seems pretty safe and the black king is... I mean, it's probably safe for now, but it's also a little bit more airy than our king. So maybe there could be something there. That's nicely put. <laughs> There's a pawn in e5 that we're sort of lining up against, but I would be a little bit... Maybe black can go for e4 at some point. Then the bishop would look a little shaky. We can't take an a7, I suppose, because of... Rook a8, mm -hmm. take on b7. It seems like it's a very, that would be a very brave way to play. Maybe <laughs> more stupid <laughs> than brave. Just thinking like any forced variation, but I would very, I would be very concerned if I would even lose the queen here. Mm -hmm. And it just doesn't seem like it's a sure of a uh, way to play. No? <laughs> I don't think so. Maybe it is the move, but I think it's, <laughs> It's, it looks uh, too weird. Okay. We could put the queen back. If we don't want her here, we could put her back. Lining up against the e5 pawn, but it's just so well protected and we can't really... I mean, we could go knight f3 then to put more pressure on it. But then after e4, I just... I actually don't really like white's position you right don't? now. <laughs> no, I actually don't. The more I look at it. But it's probably because there's like this good move that I'm missing. No, uh, actually, actually, you can play a move like queen to c3 that you were looking at to, to look at the pawn on e5. Because e4, it does look like you might have a sacrifice on e4. Yeah, just with taking queen on c3. Yeah, maybe. So no, you are not worse here with white, far from it. Uh, just complicated position. Yeah, I think so. Maybe we could go here with the knight, but it's just, okay, it's not, it doesn't really, I was thinking about maybe sacrificing an f5, but it just seems a very slow one. Mm. I, think I think on knight f3, I would yeah. like to go e4. The suggestions. And ah. one of the ideas is knight e5, if, if uh, you are too optimistic about your position with white. So knight h4, knight e5 in that, in that case. Knight e3, uh, knight f3, I mean. Knight f3 and then e4, and here knight h4, knight e5. That is a position that I'm not sure about. <laughs> no, maybe not. With a knight on e5. Oh, but I can see Timothy is also saying knight f3 plans to go knight h4 and allows the queen to come back to. Yeah. Also, the queen can have the square on d2, so she's pointing at h6. That's a good point. Um, but the knight on e5 is quite scary. 
the light squares like knight f3 is there what Eliakin is saying, I think we can survive from, I think that's the line I mentioned where you, <laughs> we get greedy and take an a7. Um, but yeah, it's, I agree. I think it's too risky. Well, let me show you how the game continued because queen a7 is actually the move played in the game. <laughs> I could, I could hear that you were. <laughs> you <would> like <laughs> gave up I, on this move too soon, I think. That's an ugly move, but because it okay you gotta have to show me what what uh, how he made this work so good for him he takes on b7 i it's the only move only move and here knight b8 you are right about this knight b8 the queen is lost yes but it's not so simple take and take an e5 yes mm. that's okay i know we're not supposed to ask this so often <laughs> is the computer <laughs> liking this or is it like oh well the computer is completely uh, amazed by this idea <laughs> and i if i remember i think zero zero is basically safe <laughs> i don't remember exactly but it's uh it's kind of a complicated position yeah but i i actually like the move more now that i uh know that the plan was to give up the queen and <laughs> I mean, that seems more uh, initiative. Exactly, yes. This is what I wanted to show with these examples, that he's going for moves that are not forced, far from forced to take on a7, but it looks like fun <laughs> in this position. Yes. And it does give you... Like the Gorn says in the chat, it's like YOLO move. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it gives you a lot of... Um, counterplay here yeah the position suddenly becomes chaotic and and the back rank seems pretty uh weak now that there's a knight on b8 yes and all black pieces are on the queen side so the king is all alone queen to b7 and here he goes rook e8 and then yeah king f7 what would be an idea how would you arrange your pieces now what would you like to, to do next? Okay. So the knight shouldn't be too hard to get in the game. I mean, yes. we can maybe, uh, I mean, having a piece on E6 seems like a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, but of course we need to be careful about placing something in the E file. So the book on E8 is not, you know, doesn't get uh, take it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm thinking about what way to c6 is also a square. Of course, the knight on b8 is eyeing that right now. It's really the bishop that I think is our worst piece right now. Not the worst piece, but we it's it's hitting a wall right now. Hmm. Um, but can you improve it, the bishop? Do you really have a better place for the bishop here? No, probably not. No, I think I would need to do something like, uh, I don't want to play to d4, but I would have to make the other pieces do something about these mm. pawns in order to improve the bishop. So, yeah. I mean... You the mentioned knight? the knight, yes. Yeah, I'm thinking if it could... Uh, maybe it could go like this way. <laughs> uh, is, is that where you want the knight? No, it is here, but I'm thinking how I can get oh, it. Oh, E6. Um, okay, I can get to E6 from here, but it it takes a long time to get to F4 for the night. Um, maybe I can even... Where do um, we want the night? This is the question here. Yeah, and I'm thinking maybe e6 right now i think that seems like a good outpost uh maybe e5 could also be a good square e5 looks like a very good square as well right e5 is quick to get to at least i mean we can easily get to e5 then we just have to do something about this book before we place the knight there okay so let's play knight f3 okay rook takes a2 what next um, 
<laughs> ideal place is D6 right now. Yes, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> Um, let's e5, yeah, e5, okay, then I'm just gonna catch up real quick. Yeah, okay, g4, ag is suggesting g4, and it's, oh, maybe you're just saying lol because I was <laughs> suggesting g4. I don't wanna play g4 right now, but it could be an idea at some point. Okay, this bishop is under attack. Could we just... Hmm. I'm actually thinking if there could be a, like a potential draw on the position by, by going rook h8 because um, mm -hmm. it comes with the threat of rook h7 and then if the king goes over to threaten the rook then we go back and threaten rook e7 again but we're probably playing for a win here and yeah, I don't think Shiro was trying to find a draw here. <laughs> no. It would be a very weird way to try to find a, a draw. Um, we could go like this with the bishop, or we could go here. And how about active moves? Yeah. Will you keep, uh, keep threatening? If you want to play knight e5, you are worried about the rook on e8. Yeah. I'm looking at uh, d6, actually. Uh -huh, because you want rook e7. Yeah, d6. Then we could take here, and then we would end up being up in exchange. That's true. So how do I defend against d6? Um, I can put something on... I can take the knight on f3. I'm wondering if that works, or am I getting mated? Um, I have a feeling that maybe... No, you're not getting mated. Maybe I'm not, but I'm... there. King can go here after that. Yes, but if then there's a okay, so I I can give another check on e6. Yeah, you're thinking like here. Yes, here. king f6. Another check on e6, and if I go to g5, there's h4, king h5, and there's a bishop d1 in the end. Oh, <laughs> that can work. It's a nice uh, detail. But maybe I don't have to go all the way to g5. I'm wondering if I can stay in the tiny box, maybe go back to f7 and uh, hope to make a draw. So if I go here, then you go here. And if I go here, you just go back. If, uh, if I'm not getting mated, it is. <laughs> Another check, yes. And then if you go here, then this rook starts checking, then you go here. And you can, you keep taking. It's, I think it's, an, but on the other hand, the knights are controlling d7 pretty well, so we probably can't make a new queen. Mm. Yes, that's, that's true. Okay. So maybe even in the other line, what you're saying is that even after the, the move bishop d1, uh, I can take on d1 and then the pawn is not going anywhere. Let's let's show this because we are getting uh, ahead of ourselves here. So d6, uh, we were looking at queen takes f3, wondering if this works. And here there's a check. And if I go over here, I have to check with this rook because if I need bishop d1, I have to have a rook on e1. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. So here... And in this case, I have to check with this rook. And black doesn't have to go to g5. If he goes to g5, then there this happens. Bishop d1. But I yeah. guess he can just stay. Um, and here I'm not sure that I uh, can take on d1 maybe. But still, this is not forcing, far from forcing. So here they can go to f7 instead, right? Mm. Just stay here. So this is not uh, leading to mate. And if we go with the other rook here, and uh, now I can go over to g5, yes? Yeah. And h4, there's nothing more. King h5. And you don't uh, have... Even king g4. Trying to... Uh, is that good then? 
King H3, mate. Rook G6 is not... Uh, it just wants to H3 and then there's no... Yeah, the, the famous king walk of yeah, uh, short versus T-man. <laughs> Trying okay. to, to use it here. So I'm not sure. Here you have a draw, if yeah. anything, with Rook to E7 and uh, Perpetual. I don't know if I don't have anything better here because I could stop Rook E7 with Knight C8. This is something else that I have here. Let me see. I can see that both we have uh, Krunks and uh, I think Emma is also suggesting um, playing Rook E6. Rook E6, yeah. In this position, right? In this position. Rook to E6, because if you want to play Knight E5, you have to watch out for the Rook on E8. So you have to... Yeah, now the knight can go to e5 and nothing is hanging. Yep, and you're also keeping the king boxed in. Yeah. It's not running away. Now if there's going to be a checkmate, I have uh, everybody here to help out. Yeah, everybody joined. Everybody joined, yes. And in this position, very, very difficult to defend, actually. I don't know if um, there is still a way to defend for black. Uh, knight 6 to d7 was the game, knight 8 to d7, uh, I don't think it changes much because you give this check, followed by knight e5. Why is ah uh, the queen is hanging? Yes, you want rook f7 next. Yeah. Knight e5, rook b7, yeah. Get the queen, and the knight on b6 is also hanging, that's an important detail here. Yeah in case of uh, rook c2 and the king is also still very much under attack yes yeah, yeah. that's also important of course and knight 6 to d7 was the game and this is similar king f6 here knight e5 uh, with the same idea as before is winning but he goes for rook h7 trying to create this mating net mm. so he wants rook e7 queen b6 rook e7 black resigns There's no way to stop rook f7, no? But white was also threatening rook e6 checkmate. Yes, right? there was also threatening, threatening rook e6 checkmate here. You are right. So there is no real good way of stopping everything. Yeah. Rook e7. That was a really nice uh, way to get the initiative. I agree, yes. From a position. Just being greedy with the, with the queen, but... It was actually more a way to misplace the black pieces and then and then just uh, getting in with the books. Yeah, I agree. And it's a, it's a way to actually getting your pieces in. Sorry. Yeah, it's just in, the, in this uh, first position, the black's, black's pieces are very well placed. Mm -hmm. um, and But then suddenly the knight is in b8 and the rook are not uh, doubled anymore. And then everything just apart i agree yes this position i mean after rookie five here looks like uh, all white pieces are playing and black is very passive yeah, yeah. very nice uh, very nice idea here yes of sacrificing the queen for using all these weaknesses let's see more um okay here shirov is black and i'm going to flip the board this is a game like a much older game from the 1990s from and when they were playing the world championship under 20 and he is playing against french grandmaster oshar mm. with the black pieces so how do we play this with black we are again in a better position this looks quite good but i'll let you think about it yes don't want to to ruin yeah. anything I'm very much looking at e4 right now. Mm -hmm. mm, because, okay, what's the material count? Uh, three minor pieces, two rooks, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so he already sacrificed a pawn. Yes. It's good to know. <laughs> but still, <laughs> let's just. If 
if we were to take this pawn, yep. probably with the bishop, but maybe with, okay, let's just see here, because then we take back with tempo on the white queen. And the white queen doesn't really have every, anywhere active to go. She can only go back or to the side. So let's say she goes somewhere here. Mm -hmm. And then what do we have? Um, I think if white can get to castle, he might be fine. Yeah. So in good between... conditions, yeah. If he gets to castle in good conditions. Yes. So now we have a knight here in e4. That could, of course, maybe go to c3. Mm -hmm. um, it's a nice outpost. And then if he castle in this position, saying, OK, getting out of these like open files, then we can then we have two very strong pawns, pawns here in the center, so we can maybe go e4, threatening this white knight. Mm -hmm. And then, ah, and then the, if the queen is on c2, they would, oh, they would, can't push the d pawn because then the knight is hanging. Okay, it just, it seems like we definitely get an initiative, but I'm just yeah. gonna see if that agrees or if they have anything else. Uh, a5 looks juicy at some point. Yes, a5 is an idea in this position. I agree. Um, what else? Knight c8. Knight c8. Uh, I think maybe that was from the previous position. Ah, maybe. I think so, yes. Yeah, I think that would have been from previous position. Yeah, I think that's all I uh, have right now. So a5, but I don't think a5 is the first thing we're... It it does make a lot of sense. You want to because the bishop on c five is loose, so it does make sense to go a five. Um, you could also just win the pawn right away with a move like knight d seven here, if you want. If you really want your pawn back, knight d seven. Want, want. No, <laughs> no, that's not why he gave the pawn. <laughs> He wasn't planning on, on getting it back right away. Although knight d7 followed by knight c5 leads to a very pleasant position. Yeah, but I really like black's position here. You do, yes. With a pawn down, I'm. Uh, it's a very comfortable position, even with a pawn down. Mm. I agree. And even the position with equal pawns against these pawns, there will be a lot of play. So that is, is a nice thing. But of course, bishop e4, the move that Sophie was calculating is also very tempting because you get these uh, pawns in the center. Knight e4, queen c2, this is exactly what happened. And here you can go knight c3. I think this is a good move here. It didn't happen in the game, but it is possible. And play for e4. Yeah. Castle and e4. In this position. Okay, you're not going to play d3 right away, but White has some problems with his pieces. Where is the knight going for now? <clears throat> Not to f4, maybe to f2. But even then, you can at least take this bishop on c5. Yeah, and get into good diagonal. Yeah, queen takes and, and then threat. more threats. Yeah, a lot of initiative. But what he did is play knight takes c5. Um, the point being that then e4. And d3 is actually a threat. No, here he's not taking on c5, but goes for e4. Mm. Similar idea. Try to push the pawns. Has to castle. And here he could go d3, but he he's just saying that he will play d3 whenever he wants, because yeah. white doesn't really have a way to stop the pawns. So first, rook to d8. Now d3 is an even stronger threat. No? Uh, bishop g4 is of course uh, one move here, but d3 followed by e3. Who is and stopping? At the point where you're saying that two pawns are worth a rook when they're 
uh, two squares away from Pomodi. Oh, yes, yeah. I, I remember that, yeah. So they are even stronger than the bishop now. <laughs> That's what you're saying. So bishop g4 saves the bishop, but not for long. He uh, white played rook to d1. And even here, he doesn't want to go to for d3. But he goes for queen takes c5. Again, making the threat even stronger. Yeah. Now I want d3 and win the queen. So king h1. And finally, he plays d3. But it is very clever because now bishop takes d3. He takes d3. He chooses the right moment because what happens after rook takes d3? What will black play? Oh, uh, <laughs> no. No? Okay. Maybe. Let me just, I was looking at <laughs> queen f2, but you can just take that with the queen. Mm. Um, I was thinking that the rook can take, but maybe we can actually play queen f5. We can, yes. Queen f5 is the idea. Nice. Nice find. Queen f5 is game over. Wins the rook. Yeah. So the pawn on d3 cannot be take, taken in this position. Queen c3. And now it's simply bringing more pieces. Rook e3. Double the rooks. Now he goes queen c6. Pointing at g2. He wants rook h3, right? Yeah. I was actually looking at rook e2, but rook h3 is stronger, definitely. Rook e2 is coming also. <laughs> King g1, rook e2. Rook f3 to stop the threat. Also threaten the pawn on d3. And now rook c2. Here, and now it's time to bring the other rook. It was threatened anyway. So now he's bringing it to g6. Mm. He could take on f7, but I don't think he cares very much about this pawn. Just king h7 and the threat is still there. And this is actually a very nice tactic. If he goes g4, how would you play here? Rook f6. Rook f6, yeah. There is a mate on g2. No, rook takes f6 here. So... In this position, white goes for g4 directly and rook f6 anyway, of course. He takes on d3. The rook on c2 is hanging, so he's still hoping. But here it's over. King h1, rook f2, and game over. The pawn on h3 is falling. Really nice game again. <laughs> Really a nice game again. And it's starting again from a position where the center was not open. Nothing was not, uh, definitely not this was happening. Very closed position. I'm really looking forward to his uh, masterclass. <laughs> because, this, I mean, I saw that this masterclass is going to be called uh, Intuition versus Calculation. Mm -hmm. And... I'm, I, I, you get the sense that he has a very strong intuition, but you gotta back it up with some calculation because otherwise you're just gonna lose the piece and not. Yeah, it's just a very fine, I think, balance. I'm pretty sure that he he spends a lot of time on calculation because uh, every time I've seen him seen him play, he was in time trouble. So I'm pretty sure he calculates uh, ah, okay. things thoroughly. <laughs> It's not all just talent, but it's also, I mean, of course it's talent, but it's, it's just, it's not, it's not that he just knew the moves he was actually using all the time. No, but pro the intuition helps. Like there's this sense that you develop that this move should work and he's probably just investing time into looking in, in that move. Yeah. Not other moves as well. Yeah. I think that's right. That he doesn't have as much uh, waste time by looking at the wrong candidate moves. I think it's going to be a fun masterclass. Have yeah. you signed up already? Yeah, yeah, I signed up as soon as I saw it. Uh, <laughs> uh, Shirov is, of course, the strongest uh, player, but you get four masterclasses. Yes, yeah, uh, you do. And, so, and they all look very good. I was just most excited about Shirov because it's Shirov it's and true. also we had lessons. So I was like, it's so perfect because last week we had Judith Polka mm -hmm. and I got her chessable course. So. I'm trying to, you know, follow these lessons up with something. Uh, 
something more. It's very great. Yeah, I agree. He's got some great games. I still remember there is a great game that he played in the European Team Championship a few years ago, maybe two or three years ago. That was a, a complete show. Uh, I I do ha I have analyzed that game and I was thinking about showing it, but then I found all these games. So I thought it's it would be a lot of fun to see this, uh, to see more the way that he starts building the initiative rather than uh, finishing uh, the attack from a very from a superior position, which is what happened in that game. Yeah, that's a good point. It's it's more uh, inspiring to see a pretty normal position turn into something while <laughs> you're starting off with a wild position. Yeah, that's actually starting from from the opening. Everything goes wrong for Black from the opening, and he just uh, finds all the the amazing moves. He sacrifices a rook at some point. You have to look that game up. I don't remember uh, who the white player was, uh, who the black player was, but there is a position where he he has, Shirov has a king on e1, a rook on h1, and bishop on f1. And um, so they, he has all these pieces here, and he needs one more piece to attack a king that's on e6. So he needs a move like bishop h3, so he plays g3, sacrificing the rook on h1. It's an amazing game. Wow, that sounds... But you don't remember where it was played? or uh... It was played in the European Championship a few years ago. Uh, two or three years ago. Team Championship. I will look it up for you while you think about this position. Because I have it in my database here. Okay, so it was played in 2019 against Westerberg. Westerberg. Yes, Shirov Westerberg in 2019 European Team Championship. He's still going strong, that's so good. Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> Great. So what um, do we do here? What do you do? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is he up <laughs> Ah, he's up a pawn here, but he okay. He's up a pawn, but it's, uh, yeah. The pawn on d4 is not protected. and It's probably not the most important part, but okay. Other than that, it's equal. Uh, material. The, what's going on here? This bishop is a little bit not so active. Hmm. Okay. It feels like it, it's weird because I feel like we should try to open up the position for these rooks and this bishop on h5, but of course it's a little bit counterintuitive to open up the position when your opponent has the bishop pair. So, Not if you want to attack. <laughs> what if I want to attack? <laughs> That's true. Can I? doesn't work sorry so what are you looking at i'm looking at taking an e4 but i think it's like a leftover from the last game because i don't think it works i was looking at this and then pushing f3 but he has three pieces um attacking f3 so i don't think it works well it doesn't work but shiros plays it anyway oh, okay well <laughs> and that's good enough for me as well uh, but in theory, it doesn't work. But what it does, same with the... We were seeing this in Tal's games, that it creates this messy position where it's very difficult to find the right continuation. So here his idea is to go queen g4 and he wants to go for f3, of course, yeah. like you were, were planning. And in this position, white has one move that defends and keeps the advantage, and that is queen h3. But that's also pretty logical, isn't it? Pretty logical, but then f3 is happening. I I mean, okay. I don't know if you you'd feel so comfortable in a game with white. No, I probably wouldn't feel comfortable on either side. <laughs> yeah. But yes, I agree that queen h3 makes sense to just to trade queens. But here, no, it's e4 is falling. Okay, you, at least you trade queens, no? H1. And this one, and then rookie two. 
still yeah. unclear, no? Yeah. Should be an advantage for white because, well, he, in theory, white should be able to untangle somehow. Maybe rook f2 here, uh, play for rook f1. But he needs to be very careful here. Yeah, we do have two pass pawns. Yes, we do. And how many pawns for the piece? Uh, three? Uh, I think two. No, three, three, yes. Three, because yeah. we had an extra pawn from the from the beginning. Hmm. So it's it's obviously not easy at all, but it was the best chance for white in this position, queen h3. Instead, he went for h3, which is directly a mistake and gives black the advantage. So it's very easy to go wrong here. Because h3 doesn't seem like such a terrible move either. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> but now queen g5 and f3 is the big threat. And why is... Uh, oh, yeah, f3 is working now because the queen is pinning the bishop. Yeah, the bishop is spinned now. So king h1, getting out of the threat, makes a lot of sense. And this is like very precise play, queen h4. Because he still wants to play f3 now. Uh, yeah. h3 will be hanging. So king to g1, getting out of there, no check. And rook f6. Bring more pieces. The rook is headed to g6. Takes on d4. Here. Threatening again f3. Mm. Threatening also rook takes e4, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so many threats here. So we can understand this move. King h1. Get out of the pin. And how do we play with black in this position. Okay, let's see if f3 would work now. f3, uh, if he takes with the bishop, then we take here and it's checkmate. Mm -hmm. So he can't do that. And if he takes with the rook, then we can take with the queen, of course, because then he's losing the queen. If he takes with the rook, um, bishop takes, queen takes, then we have. No. Two pieces for the rook, no? In that position. Seems like if white gets the bishop pair for the rook, that's a little mm. bit too much. Um, we could maybe go f3 and then if rook takes taking on e4 instead uh -huh. um, f3 rook f3 rook e4 Threatening the bishop? Not the bishop on d4, yes. Good. But I'm not sure if... Um... Okay. Or maybe even... No. Ah, I'm going to see if there are any... Uh, I'm... <laughs> ...in the chat. Uh, Porti Alekin says, I'd take d2 with the rook. Mm -hmm. For me, vibes. Yes. I think that should also really be considered. Uh, yeah, it's all about if you can play f3 or not. Maybe we could take on g2 and then play f3. Wait, so in this position, rook takes g2. Let's let me just delete these arrows. So you're looking now at rook g2. King takes g2, and what what after king g2? Ah, rook g3. Sorry. I understood rook g2. Ah, I also understood. No, rook g2, yes. There is a suggestion of rook g2, and oh, oh. then there is rook g3. Suggested. Both That's moves, me. yes. 
Um, okay, so Rook, Rook G2, King takes. It's probably not enough. F3. On Rook G3, there's actually a very nice defense from White. And it doesn't work. Okay. Just just like that, but it doesn't work. It's a, there's only one move that defends. I will show it in a moment. Yeah, okay. So then there's Rook uh, G3 is being suggested and also Rook F8. I also saw somebody on... No, but Rook G G3 uh, fails to... to one. There's one defense, but Rook G2 has not been, Rook ah, G2 okay. has not been solved. Okay, so you say Rook G3 is not working, but Rook takes G2 has not been solved and okay. it has been suggested by anna as well on youtube king takes g2 f3 um the question is what do we play after king takes g2 rook g2 yeah. makes a lot of sense but what do we do next f3 he still has three pieces protecting Maybe then we take an e4. Mm -hmm. Then we take on e4, yes. Yeah, and then rook e2 is also a threat. Yep. King g2, rook e4, and rook e2 is a big threat. And uh, the game was pretty much over after this. But before showing you the last couple of moves, let me go back here after king h1 and see rook g3, which looks very tempting. Very good. <laughs> good actually it does look very good but here uh there is a defense in bishop f2 ah. surprise yes that's not a very nice surprise <laughs> no very unpleasant nothing really works anymore no not f3 not rook takes b3 we don't have rook takes h3 it's basically game over after bishop f2. Yeah, completely. And in this line that you are looking at with f3, um, uh, rook takes f3, rook e4. I think I was looking at some problems on the back rank. So a move like rook f1 could be an idea because you can't take on, on d4 here. No, and then we would maybe have to take an f3 and go into that rook for the two bishop, but that doesn't seem very good. Yeah, but if you take now on f3, rook f3, I'm threatening the rook, I'm threatening mate. Yeah. Yeah, then maybe we want to save the rook. Sorry, when? Oh, my, I'm just thinking after, if we take an f3 here. Okay. And then... Uh, if it's adding with the queen. Yeah. Yes, I want to take with the queen and threaten a few things here. Yeah, that looks pretty lost. <laughs> yeah, this doesn't work, no. But rook takes g2 is game over. Bishop e2, I think, was suggested. And bishop e2, well, is not bad, keeps the game going, but it's not winning either. Rook g2 is game over. The romantic chess. The romantic chess, yes. And rook takes e4. This is a game against Korchnoi, by the way. Ah. Korchnoi is uh, is white. So it's a pretty tough loss. Yes. Rook takes e4. The threat is rook e2. And there is no good defense. Bishop f2, still rook e2. Mm -hmm. And you want to give a check on g5 and play g3. Or f3, sorry. f3 first could maybe also be an idea. I think so, yes. Uh, I think you can. you can probably start with either way. In this position but if king g1 for example you're going to give the check first <laughs> yeah and then push the pawn it's funny no rook g1 because rook f2 no no defense in this position so the the bishop actually went to g1 in the game and here comes check king h1 and the final uh touch do we get to play f3 no we don't no, we don't. <laughs> but we do get to include the bishop in the game. Okay, well, that's something. Where do we put it then? On, on g4? No. 
Mm, he didn't play bishop g4. Oh, we bishop... just put it back to g6 and go. Bishop back to g6, yes. Yeah. And bishop to e4. And here, this is how the game ended. Bishop f2, bishop e4, and the white resigned. Yeah. Not allowing the the checkmate, though. <laughs> they, were, they never allowed the, the checkmate. Uh, there were some games where he actually got to checkmate on the board, but not these ones, no. <laughs> um, yeah, very nice games. There are many other fantastic games, but I'm going to leave those to you. Have some fun. Look for Shirov and uh, study his games. I will. <laughs> they, they seem uh, very, uh, very fun. Yep. And we are going to end it for today. And uh, we'll leave you with the Chess Champions Tour that is going to start in about half an hour here on Chess24. We are probably going to be back uh, next week at the same time with a new player. I'm, I don't know now exactly who is next on our list. Maybe Vanchuk? <laughs> we'll have to, uh, we'll have to see. Um, yeah, that is all. If you have uh, any more questions, remember to check out coaches.com because that is actually the one sponsoring these free lessons. <laughs> that is the website giving you these free lessons. Uh, and if you want to uh, sign up for the masterclass Sophie was mentioning with Shirov, you can do that there, uh, or if you need a chess coach, you can also find one over there. It's the best place for both. Best place for both, yes. And many new things are coming, so stay close. <laughs> Thank you guys very much. Have a fun evening. Uh, see you soon. Bye.